What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. So today's video is all about how to find the very best gaming laptop that you can for less than $800. Now I'm going to walk you through all of the steps when buying this gaming laptop and also help you know which pitfalls to avoid so that you don't get a laptop that you later regret. So hopefully by the end of this video you can make a confident choice on a gaming laptop that will help you have a lot of fun and enjoyment over the long term, which is my goal as a creator to be as helpful as possible so that you come back and check out more of my content. Now, before we continue, I gotta give a big shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this episode. And today they actually wanted me to talk about the Galaxy Watch 4, which I've been using for a little while now. First of all, this is arguably one of the most stylish smartwatches that money can buy. Now, of course, you can track daily caloric activity based on heartbeat monitoring and motion. One really interesting feature that I haven't seen on any other smartwatch is the bioelectrical impedance analysis. This will allow the Galaxy Watch 4 to estimate your body fat composition. I could see this being super useful if you're on a diet and you want to consistently monitor your progress. Another really handy feature that the Watch 4 has is the sleep tracking functionality. And last night, I got six hours and 40 minutes of continuous sleep, which is why I ended up taking a nap this afternoon. The Watch 4 also features an ECG or an echocardiogram. Now this can be useful if you wanna measure your heart's rhythm and check for any irregularities. Now you can get an LTE version of the Watch 4, which will allow you to use cellular reception to stream audio straight from the watch to say a pair of Bluetooth headphones while you're out jogging and you don't need to bring your smartphone with you. It also has IP68 water resistance, so you can feel free to take this into the shower or if you wanna use it to measure your calories while swimming. And then of course you have all the other basic functionality like checking your calendar, checking the weather, responding to text messages, and making phone calls. So that's a lot of positives, but what about the cons of the Galaxy Watch 4? At the moment, the Watch 4 is not compatible with iPhones. The interface also took a little bit for me to get used to, but once you realize that it functions very similar to a smartphone interface, I was able to adapt to it pretty quickly. Now, another challenge with the Watch 4 is that the battery life can last about a full day, maybe a little bit more depending on your usage, which means you're gonna have to charge it every day. And if you wanna use it for sleep tracking, you'll have to charge it sometime in the middle of the day. Say, whenever you go into the shower, you take the watch on and put it on the charger, and then you'll be good to go for the rest of the day. The last potential con is that the design is very modern contemporary. And if you're looking for more of a classical appearance, then you may want to steer clear of the Watch 4 and instead go for the classic version, which has more of a modern businessman type of look. Now they've got a sale going on for $40 off, so now is a great time to pick up one of these Galaxy 4 watches. So to wrap all this up, if you have an Android phone and you're looking for a high quality smartwatch at a reasonable price, I think the Galaxy Watch 4 is a pretty great choice. So thanks again to Best Buy for supporting my channel. Let's get back to the topic at hand, how to find the best gaming laptop for $800 or less. So the first question that you should ask yourself is what kind of gamer are you? Are you a casual gamer? You just wanna play games like The Witcher 3 or Skyrim. You're not really trying to compete against other people. You're just there to have fun and have a great experience. In this case, I recommend getting a 60 hertz display or at least a display with the highest color gamut range that you can get. Now, if you're a competitive gamer that enjoys fast paced games, I highly recommend getting a display that is at least 120 hertz. This increased refresh rate allows you to aim a little bit better and track your enemies better in these fast paced games. Now it's important to note that these displays on these budget laptops can sometimes have ghosting or potentially have lower color gamut. So just know that there's only a handful of gaming laptops within this market segment that has 144 hertz displays that also have high color gamut and no ghosting. Now I wanna talk about the holy trinity of budget gaming laptops. Now I'm using this triangle of choice metaphor because when you have a budget cap of $800, it really limits what features you can get. And you really can't get a really high performance machine that is also very premium and is super budget friendly all at the same time within this space. 
when you get, say, a $600 HP Pavilion or Lenovo IdeaPad, you're really giving up some of those premium and performance features because you're getting lower end hardware and maybe a lower end display and trackpad. But if you go for more premium features, you might be able to get a 144 hertz display, but you're probably only going to get a 1650, maybe a 1660 Ti, or maybe an RTX 3050, and you're certainly not going to get an RTX 3050 Ti and the high-end display and have it cost less than $800, most likely, unless it's a really good sale. If you can save up to $1,000 or $1,200, it becomes a lot easier to find a laptop that is higher performance, you'll have better quality displays, keyboard and trackpad on average, and you'll probably be able to get an RTX 3060 GPU instead of the weaker, more budget-oriented GPUs, on the market. All of that said, if your budget truly is $800, this is what you should expect going into a purchase on a gaming laptop. First of all, you're gonna look for a laptop with a GTX 1650, 1660 Ti, RTX 3050, RTX 3050 Ti, or you could go for a used or refurbished RTX 2060. In addition, AMD also has a handful of GPUs like the RX 5500M or 5600M, which can also provide pretty good performance for the money. Now, the weakest GPU in this category is the GTX 1650. So what kind of gameplay can you expect? Well, in many modern games, if you play on medium or low settings, you can get 40 to 60 FPS in medium many, many titles, and some of the lighter weight modern titles you might even be able to push up to 70, 80, 100 FPS depending on the game. Really light games like CSGO and Fortnite can push over 100 FPS on a GTX 1650. So just because you're getting a lower end GPU doesn't mean you can't have a great gaming experience, especially on the more optimized titles. But if you're expecting to play Cyberpunk 2077 with RTX on and everything on Ultra, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, another crucial difference I wanna point out is that the RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, and the RTX 2060 all include ray tracing and DLSS support. So this can make a big difference in modern games that have those features, especially DLSS, because it essentially lets the game play on a lower resolution and upscales it up for better performance. My top picks for six core processors in this budget range would be the Ryzen 5 5600H or the Intel i5 11400. These are probably the top two processors that you're gonna get in these budget-oriented laptops, and they're quite capable. They're gonna be able to do all the games, they're gonna be able to play all the things, edit all the videos, but they'll be just a bit slower than their eight core counterparts, especially in multi-threaded tasks that can take advantage of all eight cores. Another important question you should be considering is what size of laptop do you need? Are you a college student and you're constantly traveling, taking the laptop with you everywhere you go in a backpack? you probably wanna get a 14 or 15 inch laptop. But if you're a bigger dude, you could still take some of the 17 inches. There's actually some pretty light 17 inch gaming laptops. The new bezels and designs on the modern laptops allow a 15 inch laptop to essentially be the size of a 14 inch laptop from a few years ago. Same things for 17 inch laptops are now the size of 15 inch laptops from a couple years ago. If you really want a laptop that is under 14 inches and can gain well, your options are going to be very limited. So know that if you want to get an ultra small laptop, you'll probably have to pay a premium price. Which brings me to my next point. It's very, very important when you're shopping for a laptop under $800, especially right now, you ideally want to get a laptop that's on sale because when you get a laptop that's on sale, it allows you to get more RAM, maybe a better display, perhaps a larger SSD, all at the same time. So don't pay full price, especially since we're halfway through the year on the budget GPU launch cycle. And to help everyone out, I do have a gaming laptop sheet that has all of the deals currently available on gaming laptops that me and Steven from Owner to Own can find. Link in the description to that if you wanna go check that out. So if you want to know my top recommended laptops for under $800, be sure to check that list because I've got benchmarks and mini reviews on almost all of the listings. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, drop a like, and if you wanna see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out.